Okay. Yes, we are live. Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Franz, Franz Van Stone from Cross Hatching with Franz Van Stone on Sketchy. Hope you guys are well. I see a lot of people from everywhere. I mean, Michigan, Tennessee, California, Cincinnati, Maine. A lot of, oh my gosh, this is great. So many people, San Diego. Um, so I see that we already have some questions and I'm going to try to address them all when I draw. Um, first, I need to share with you the photo that I decided to work from today. And I would like you to also feel welcome later to go on Sketchy find that photo and um, well I will post it on sketchy anyway and try to practice uh, what it is that I did today as well so that way you will have you know an idea of kind of where you're at um, hi oh my gosh Margaret you're here <laughs> this is so cool Pat from Oregon oh my gosh Scott St Stockholm this is great um, so I'm going to start answering questions we're going to be here for about an hour and I hope I can get something done that will look like the face that I want to draw in about an hour. And as I draw, you can ask your questions and I will do my best to answer them. But first, let's talk about material. Okay, yesterday I had dinner with a friend from Europe and he showed up with this pen in his pocket. I don't know if you know those big pens. This is a big pen, but it has this uh, retractable uh, point. I used to use them when I was a kid. I love those because they retract. And uh, I said, oh, can I borrow your pen? And he said, oh, you can have it. So I decided to trade and give him my, uh, my big pen and he gave me his. So, and the thing here is broken because they always break. Um, I love these pens. They are cheap, reliable. The ink always flows. You can't go wrong. I, I absolutely love big pens. And guys, I'm not saying that because they're, made in France, but they are made in France. Okay, and let's talk about paper. The best thing when you cross hatch in ballpoint pen like this is to have a paper with a tiny little bit of tooth, but slightly. I could do it on a piece of photocopy paper. In fact, you're gonna see me um, use the back of an envelope to you know, uh, scribble in order to wipe my pen kind of like this. So I'm going to use that on the side. And I could have drawn on this, true. But what I use here, do you guys know Blick um, Art uh, Supplies? I use this Bristol paper. It's 9 by 12. Um, and I love the fact that it is Bristol, so it's a little thick, tiny bit thick. It has a little bit of thickness. But it has just a tiny bit of tooth. If, if only the video could convey that, I don't know, you probably just see uh, something very smooth, but it has a tiny bit of grab and I love it. So again, uh, Blick, Bristol, can you see nine by 12? I think they make them bigger, although I'm not sure. Heavy page, see it's uh, 100, they're usually 80, 15 sheets. They're not super cheap, but they're totally affordable, at least in my opinion. So, and that's the whole point um, that I want you to know is that um, expensive materials are not gonna make for a better drawing <laughs> at all. So start with what you have. And if what you have is pricey, then so be it. But uh, what we have here is really simple materials. All right, I'm gonna show you the photo that I chose. This is the one. Now, this photo is amazing because it has a lot of contrast. And you know me by now, you know that I love drawing dark complexions. I think they, they catch the light in a way that, uh, you know, white skinned people like me don't. Uh, so um, this is definitely a more, uh, more challenging and more interesting um, photo for me. Um, so I'm going to start, but first I want you to know that when we start in pen, oh, and by the way, I do sometimes a lot of, uh, two drawings on one paper. So this is the one I did yesterday to promote on Instagram. So I'm just flipping the paper and using the other, the other piece, the empty part of the paper. Um, I want you to know that when you draw in pen, just go for it. And when you cross hatch, you, 
you add a lot of layers to things. So whatever you drew will be covered up at some point. So if I draw, you're going to see me draw very slight construction lines. Um, they're going to get covered up. Okay. All right. So that's just don't be afraid of, you know, diving right in. All right. So um, again, oh my gosh, Saskatoon. This is great. And Rio from Brazil. Guys, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that you guys come from all over. My very first question is, what is the best way to draw hands? Um, it, unfortunately, we're going to draw a face, so it's not going to really uh, answer this question with this particular live. But I would say that you treat hands almost like you treat a face, which is um, don't treat it like you think the way it should look, because I think that is the wrongest way to go about things. Um, try to see it as um, volumes um, instead of getting caught up in, again, kind of repeating myself, but what you think fingers should look like. Um, I think it would be a great thing, uh, Michaela, you were asking this question, if we did that once on, uh, on Sketchy, maybe that's something that we could do where people would submit photos of hands, you know, any any position of hands and maybe we could do like a really fun thing on hands. Uh, I would be up for it. So I'm going to move on and answer your second question. Um, how do you draw from an actual photo? You're having a hard time. I think a lot of photos on, on sketchy and anywhere else, you know, sometimes when people are like, Oh, can you draw my kid? And they give you a photo and there is nothing that you can do um, with it. You just have to go with, um, contrast in my opinion contrast is everything so up the contrast on the photo that is given to you and try to grab onto those dark areas that's crucial to me i always draw from high contrast photos because to me they're truer to life um, and they're more interesting when it comes to uh, showing light okay um all right layers and patience but my cross hatching tends to look like little cages oh i know what you mean Okay, Alber, I know what you mean with the little cages. What we're going to do here, so I'm going to start drawing, okay, so that we, uh, we actually get something done, right? Wouldn't that be nice? I'm going to up the, uh, the light on my iPad. I have the, the photo on the iPad one more time, just so you guys can see. This is what I'm going to be drawing from on my big iPad. I have it right in front of me here. Boom. Um, what you're going to see during this live drawing is that I am going to draw with cross hatching um, using the curves of the face. Like I can't ignore the fact that there are curves in this face. Okay, so I'm going to draw a rough line here, which you can probably barely see. Okay, I drew a line here on my piece of paper, which is going to be where my eyes are. Because um, her face is not, it's not a frontal picture. Um, the eyes, it's a little slanted, so I'm going to make this a little darker for you to see. The eyebrows are here, so I'm not starting with cross hatching. I hope you realize that. I'm starting with the kind of the rough outline so that I can get comfortable a little later. Okay, and there's the edge of the forehead. There's going to be an eye here. Okay. Uh, there's going to be nose starting here the other eye is here okay so I'm doing rough lines here and did you notice I'm drawing very lightly there's absolutely no reason to start dark as we're going to come back to every one of these things okay this is her eye she's looking in that direction okay so not worrying about cross hatching, but as you guys know from probably following my class, those of you who have, the class, by the way, is still available at, uh, at Sketchy. And um, you can take it at any moment. I'm doing rough, rough lines. You know that we start light. That's that's rule number one. And then we find the darkest areas and then we fill in whatever we think um, is appropriate to fill in at first. Okay, so there's a cheek here. And I also don't want to lose track of where her nose is. There seems to be like a shape here. Okay. 
Okay, it's going to be nostrils. There we go. And then there's going to be a mouth right about here. It's so full of contrast. Ah, it's such a beautiful photo. Actually, the middle of her mouth might be more here. So as I build uh, the first marks that I make for a drawing, I always try to see, okay, where is the edge of the eye in comparison to, let's say, the middle of the nose? It seems to fall just about right, but the mouth, the middle of the mouth is actually more here. Okay. There's going to be a lot of darkness here. Okay. And again, not at all getting into uh, cross-hatching yet. I just want to know that I'm in the right spots. The edge of her face. Here it's going to be dark so I can make a line. Do you start seeing a face a little bit? Okay. Um, we're going to have fun with a little bit of hair here. She has a Headwear here, starting here. Lots of contrast here on the forehead. And boom, I think if I, think if I have that to work with, we can, we can have some fun, right? So when we start cross-hatching, the first thing we want to find is the, the dark areas, right? Now, um, Albert, I will address your issues your issue of your cross hatching looking like little cages as I go. So you'll see your, your question will be answered. Um, I want to move on to um, Christelle's question. Uh, do you recommend structuring the drawing before cross hatching? Look, Christelle, we're doing it right now. Um, overlapping perspective from different teachers when working with cross hatching. Yeah, um, I understand. I think everybody has a different approach. I like having kind of a you know something to work from so that once I cross hatch I don't have to worry about anything else but cross hatching obviously because then if you're cross hatching and you're still worrying about ooh is the cheek this way or that way uh, no you want to establish that right from the beginning right so that's what I'm doing here ta-da and here's the mouth and then there's going to be pretty little chin here underneath there so I do have a structure before I start cross hatching it's kind of goofy because I have my phone right here in front of me uh, which is really the camera that films what I'm doing um, so I have to look on either side of the phone to actually see what I do it's it's fun guys it's fun times okay now I'm gonna start going dark Okay. Um, you know, the next question that I'm getting about having to study anatomy of the face in order to know how to draw. So here's the question. Give some tips on drawing portrait using cross hatching technique and whether anatomy study of face, it's compulsory for drawing portrait because all faces won't look similar. Thank you. Um, well, I can tell you right away that it wasn't compulsory for me because I never studied anatomy. I only studied what I observe, what I see. And that is the closest that I can tell you I got to um, studying anatomy. No, it's not compulsory. Is it recommended? And will you get be better results if you do? Probably. But honestly, I never have. So I think that I am proof that sometimes um, observation is just as good as studying what's underneath the skin. Um, if you really have a, a keen sense of observation of where the light hits, this is really all that matters at the end of the day. Okay. All right. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Arturo, you're asking a very good question after this. Um, is it possible for you to do a close-up of the hatching? On most of your classes, the camera is at your eyes level. Okay, here's the issue that we have when we get closer, is my hand tends to hide a lot of the hatching. Um, so if you want at some point, what I'm going to do, just to get a little crazy, I'm going to take my phone off of the, of the thing for just a minute so that you can, I can really make it close and you can see what I'm doing from very close, if, if that helps. Then I'll put it back on the gooseneck. I hope that will help Arturo. But I want to do that when I have a little bit of cross-hatching starting. 
Okay. All right. So I am now going to start by filling in some dark. And right now, again, I'm going dark on the edge of the dark area. And I'm going to start filling in cross hatching. And guys, I am starting with a heavy hand here. You know why? Because I know it's dark and it kind of feels safe to do, um, like to press on my pen quite a bit. I am really going kind of putting pressure here on the pen because I want to fill that in so that it looks super dark. Does that make sense? You will see that all the cross hatching will not have the same pressure. Um, I will go much lighter, for example, when I go here, there's a little bit of a shadow, you will see that my pen will not be even held the same way. I'll, I'll show you. So here, I don't care, this is so dark. I am going all in and I am filling in with pen. And honestly, when you fill in with pen like that, just to achieve a dark, like a, a big dark area, I would say don't stress about which direction your cross hatching goes because that's not really relevant, okay? Now, I have a lot of darkness in this eye area, but I don't want to mess it up. This is dark here. The eye is dark. I know there are, there are some eyelashes here. And now look, I cross hatch, right? But suddenly it's much lighter. I put a lot less pressure because I see that in my photo, I don't have as much darkness right here as I do here. So filling in, but avoiding where I see a little bit of darkness, a little bit of lightness compared to the darkness, I'm sorry. Okay. All right, so remember I told you that my cross hat, oh, this is, this is horrible, but that's okay because it's the beginning, right? Um, and by the way, little side note, rarely I, I see, do I see white uh, eyeballs. You will not see white. You will see that we are going to cross hatch inside the eye here too, because it would look totally unnatural to leave this eye so, so white. It just doesn't work that way. When you look at any photo, you will find that it's just not white. It's very rare to see white. There are some white areas in these photos. They're very isolated. There's one here. There's one here. And I see one here. And that's a, and a little bit near the mouth. That's, that's it. The rest of it will have some kind of cross hatching because it's a very, uh, it's very full, full photo, full of, uh, of contrast. Okay. All right, here I'm in a small area. So my little um, hatchings are very, very small. But now for here, there's a little bit of, of, uh, of darkness, but not much. I am going to go and watch. This is to answer the question about um, hatches looking like little cages, right? What you want to do, well, first of all, I'm going to flip my clipboard a little bit, okay? So stay with me because I always pull towards me. And when I do, I want this uh, gesture to be as natural as possible. So I, I just move my paper. It's just easier that way. I do the same thing with the iPad. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and add some cross hatching here. And now I'm going light and I'm curving according to the forehead, the shape of the forehead. And now I'm going super, super, super light. And whatever is darker, I come back on it, you see? Flipping it towards me again, because remember that to me, the more comfortable uh, gesture is the one where I pull towards me like this, okay? So I'm gonna make it happen by just flipping my board in any which direction to make that happen. And for those of you who wonder if there's any rhyme or reason as to whether I hatch this way or that way, I just go with whatever fills the page with dark 
value. I, I'm just trying to translate value here. There's hair here and the darkness here. Okay. So a forehead is curved. Those of you who followed my class and saw that we drew a potato, there's a reason for this. The potato teaches us that there's not a flat area on the potato and the face is kind of the same way. So I bring a little bit of curving to my gesture, more like this, you know, not dramatically so, but enough that it's going to follow the natural shape of the forehead. Okay. Um, if you're not a, that good at drawing, can tracing outlines of face uh, something that can be done? I don't have rules for this. I don't think, Clara, I think that's an excellent question. I am not a purist when it comes to drawing. If you want to just practice cross hatching as opposed to, you know, everything else. Sure, trace away. Who, who am I to tell you not to trace? That would be absolutely insane. I think tracing probably will give you the confidence to have a good shape to work from and then um, fill in with the cross hatching. So I'm all for whatever works for you. I don't trace because for me, I personally enjoy the challenge of having to um, figure out the proportions of a face and stuff like that, which for me is where half the fun is. But I totally respect whatever you have to do in order to learn something. This is not for me to say, oh my gosh, don't trace. Okay, no. Trace away if that gives you the confidence to have the right, uh, the right proportions. But you will see as you draw more and more, I'm sure you're not going to need to trace um, ever again. And keep in mind, guys, that when I crosshatch, I always come back to an area and crosshatch over and over because I find out, oh my gosh, it wasn't dark enough. I'm going to sneeze. Sorry. <coughs> okay. Okay, um, when, sorry, when I uh, crosshatch, thank you, thank you, thank you for the bless you. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, uh, a lot of people are here that I'm really happy. Oh, Anne, you're here. This is great. Um, what I'm saying is that I always come back to an area of crosshatching. A friend of mine compared crosshatching to watercolor. Not that I have much knowledge of watercolor, but I understand that people who do watercolor apparently layer and um and i do too i guess when i uh, draw a car um sometimes i wait for an area to dry and then i come back with another layer it's the same thing with cross hatching you can't always have one thing right you come back and add another layer of darkness later okay for example this is really not good do you agree there's a contrast here because we're doing only the beginning we are going to add enough darkness to make this area of her face um, look realistic. So bear with me here. I'm going to add a little bit of cross hatching this way, starting light, even though I know it's a dark area, but I don't want to mess anything up. So starting light, light here. The photo does, doesn't give a tremendous amount of information as to how her eye goes. That's okay, so I'm just gonna treat this like a big dark area. And there's a, a shadow here that plays a part. Okay, remember what I said a few minutes ago about um, the inside of an eye, the white is never white. Well, there it is. It's not white on the photo. <clears throat> it's not really white in real life either. So I'm I'm darkening wherever I see darkness, and that's all there is to it. Like I'm even darkening where I thought it was the darkest. It's a very dark area here. But you'll see it's going to turn out okay. Going in all kinds of directions. Not worrying which one goes first. Doesn't matter. Just go do your thing. Okay, there's darkness here also. Now, how, how do I deal with like a big area of darkness here? I'm just going to go with very rough 
dark with a lot of pressure hatches and I'm not going to move much beyond this. Okay. There we go. And wherever I have a big expanse to cover with uh, cross hatching, um, I tend to go slower and longer. So my, my, uh, my pen strokes, let me show you, are gonna go longer, slower, and um, just to make sure that I can cover the area that I need to cover, you see? Okay. Sorry about the sniffles. Not something I, I had anticipated. Okay. All right. Let me go back to where it's very dark here. Okay. How often do you draw every day? Hi, Joan. Uh, my gosh, Joan, I love your work. Um, and I love what you make your kids do too in your classes because you're an art teacher. And I just, oh gosh. Uh, Joan, I draw every day. And uh, there are days, eh, okay, I'll be honest, there are days where I'm busy. Uh, people visit from other countries, for instance, and uh, I need to be a host and I need to be polite and I don't want to just uh, isolate myself and draw. But usually I draw every day, yes. That's, um, it's kind of like a discipline thing, you know, you try to go back to it all the time. Okay. It's an everyday habit. And that's why when people say, oh my gosh, you've got such talent. No, 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 it's not talent. It's being at it every day. Sometimes a day goes by, you don't do it. It's okay. You're not going to lose the, you know, the skill that you built, but it's about skill at the end of the day. That's what I want to insist on is that you hone a skill. I was not born knowing how to draw and don't let anybody tell you that it's a gift because that just means that when it's time to pay you, they're paying you for something magical, not something that you've worked on for hours prior. Okay, did you notice it's dark? Oh boy, it's dark. That's okay, it's gonna get dark here too. Look, the cheek. Filling in cross hatching here. There we go. Okay. Are you cross hatching on a single piece of paper or are you using a number of sheets as padding? Can't tell. Robert, excellent question. Single sheet of paper as much as possible. The padding doesn't do anything for cross hatching. In fact, um, the harder the surface underneath, the better. You've noticed that I'm drawing on a clipboard. It's a plastic clip clipboard. I insist on that because um, cross-hatching in a, in a sketchbook, for instance, where you have the padding of what's underneath, uh, doesn't yield very good results when it comes to cross-hatching. So what I do, even in a sketchbook, is I slip my clipboard underneath what I draw so that I have the hardest surface possible to cross hatch on. Now, this piece of paper, as I said at the beginning of uh, this session, this piece of paper has a little bit of thickness to it, but just enough, just enough to absorb. Um, when I want to go dark like this, it will make it happen. <clears throat> but other than that, no padding. No, you don't want that. It's not going to work for cross hatching. You want to be as close as possible to a hard surface. Now, I want to show you on the side, I've got this envelope uh, that I got in the mail, and I wipe my pen every now and then. Not often, because frankly, when you draw lightly, you will find that your pen is not going to drool. It's going to drool only when you go very dark. Strange but true. Okay. Let me read another question. 
Um, when using pencil graphite on those very dark areas, it gets really shiny. Yes, wondering if there is anything you can do about that. Margaret, this is, this is the problem with uh, graphite is that it's shiny gray. It's, uh, can't escape that. And I am not yet a pro at charcoal, but I'm sure that charcoal is the solution to this. Um, I will try to do more charcoal like the way I do on the iPad. But for me, the solution to that shine is to go with a, a very, very soft uh, lead. So, you know, 4B, 6B, then you might get a chance to not get too much of a shine. Then it gets really dark. And that's the closest I can get to a satisfactory result when I, when I draw with, um, with pencil. So go with a very soft lead, 4B, 6B. Um, that's the, the softest that I deal with personally when I draw um, with pencil. And uh, you'll see that it shines a little less than if you were staying, let's say, in HB or H for that matter, which is just gray. So uh, give that a shot, but there will always be some kind of shine with lead, always. And um, yeah, it's, it's not fun to realize. <laughs> okay, let me move on. Do you ever apply this technique on live drawings? If so, any tips? Uh, this technique, meaning the technique, um, Margaret, I'm going to ask you to ask this question again so that I understand it better. Could you do that for me, please? If you're here, um, if you could re-ask that, that would be, um, that would be great. And, uh, Joan, to comment on what you're saying, uh, yes, it's all about the practice, right? Um, students sometimes, and you teach high school, so you know what I'm talking about. I teach high school too. Students often want to have results right away. They, I think, you know, it's an age where they are so eager to get results on the things they do. You know, they, they start driving, they want to be independent. They start working, they want to make money. Um, they would like everything to sort of land. And I'm not saying that they're entitled and they want results uh, because they're entitled, no. They just are some, sometimes too eager to get results that it took me years to get, you know, uh, like they want to get that right away. You, we as teachers have to really emphasize that results take time. They take months, years, hours, sometimes a day of just honing this skill. There is no magic. And I repeat there is no talent. There is no such thing as me discovering that I could draw. That's not how it happened. I didn't discover I could draw. I started drawing and it wasn't great. And then I drew some more. And mind you, I did that ever since I was a kid. So, okay, maybe that's why it's been such a long time. But um, the way I draw today, I would say, has been the case for the past 10, 13 years. This is really like this approach of just, okay, you know what? Let's just use a pen and let's cross hatch. I didn't even know it was called cross hatching at first. That's about the past, yeah, I would say 13 years. 2006 is when things um, really started like getting uh, daily for me in, in drawing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> with the observation type of learning, what are your what do your eyes look for? Little cheat codes to your observations, checking if things are in right distance. Well, my eyes always try to not let the brain interfere, Nathan. You always want your eyes to really see what is on the paper, what is on the original shot, for instance, the original photo. Like try to not let your eyes fool you and not let your brain take over um, what you think should be drawn. Does that make sense, Nathan? This is really something that I try to tell people who always ask me, but how do you know? You don't know, you let your eyes see and don't let your brain interfere with your eyes. Because man, our brain, our brain will sometimes decide what an eye should look like, what a nose should look like, shouldn't be that way. 
Okay? No way. Now, the way I practice cross-hatching to answer Clara's question, sometimes, you know when you're on the phone with someone and um, you doodle? I don't know if you guys do this. I do this a lot. I don't spend a whole lot of time on the phone because I hate talking on the phone. But when I do, uh, first of all, I hate holding the phone. So I was always put my phone in Bluetooth with my Bluetooth headphones. And then my hands are free. And when that happens, I do things like this on the phone. I just talk to that person and I do that. See these things that I do right now? That's what I do. I can cover pages while I'm on the phone with someone of this, of trying to use different pressures on my pen and see what happens. There's no rhyme or reason. It doesn't go anywhere. But with this kind of, it, basically what it does is it teaches you a gesture. At the end of the day, I believe that's what practice does. Practice, you know, it's like learning an instrument. When you play guitar, you've got so much muscle memory for what your hand is doing on the neck of the guitar. It's the same thing here. And these little exercises here, these brainless, I insist on the word, brainless little exercises, even though you do make decisions, but you don't let the brain decide Oh, you know, this doesn't look right. Who cares? You just cross hatch. Look, this is what I do all the time. I'm going to get a little closer here with the camera. Hmm. See that? That's it. Pages and pages of that. And that's really, I mean, you know, when we talk about technique, it's muscle memory. It's, it's making your hand do something that it doesn't have to think too much about. Well, as if your hand thought about anything much. Okay. Covering more um, area here. Look, I am going to bring in some very light cross hatching where it's light. Not overdoing it because here's the deal. When you draw in pen and you overdo it, you know you're done. You're done. You overdo it. It's like I said that before. It's like putting salt in, in any meal, you know, that you're cooking. You put too much salt, there's no going back. There's no going back. So you salt lightly at first, right? And then you add if necessary. I can't think of a better analogy to cross hatching than salting a dish. Okay, there's a note. There's not much darkness on that nose. Very lightly here, look. Just a tiny bit. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. I wonder if you guys even see that I'm putting hatches here. It's so light. So light. Look. Just a bit. Here we go. And again, because cross hatching is all about layering, I go back to the areas that need to be darker. The dark can be set a little later, right? There we go. Okay. Do you use the cross hatching technique when you draw a live model as opposed to using a photograph? If you do any tips, ah, Margaret, I get it. Um, I do. Uh, in fact, I recently did um, a live drawing on camera and uh, I had a model in front of me. And sure enough, I, I went to cross hatching um, as my default mode. Now, I didn't have much time. So like here, I have an hour. This is really a luxury. I had 10 minutes. But even in 10 minutes, you can lay down some serious values with cross hatching. Um, Ooh, the picture is suddenly a little blurry. I'm sorry. It's probably because I'm moving. Can you see, guys? Ooh, it's pixelized a little. Um, yeah, what I was saying is that I did use cross-hatching because cross-hatching can also be a fast way 
to lay down some really uh, serious values. So yeah, live model or not, that's kind of my, uh, my go-to approach to, um, to adding values. Yep, I hope I answered your question, Margaret. Okay, I notice you hold your pen away from the tip. This gives you better control, probably. You know what it allows me to do? When I hold my pen kind of up there, I have a better opportunity to make it slanted because when you draw like this, your pen is gonna be almost perpendicular to your paper. And really that's not what I want when I do very light cross hatching. I want to be able to hold the pen uh, more at an angle. And the only way to do that is to hold it kind of far. But when I wanna go dark, then I don't hesitate to get closer and now add darkness. Look at this. This is where darkness is. I'm going to add the darkness. How does the shadow go here? Mm, something like this, okay. So here I'm going dark. So I'm not holding the pen necessarily the same way now because I want to add the darkness. And something you notice right away when you put pressure on your pen like this, it will drool much more um, consist consistently than if you go light. So you need to wipe your pen constantly. Okay, nose, edge of the nose. I'm gonna go back to this, don't worry. I'm just, you know, moving along from one thing to another. Very light hatches here, holding the pen extremely lightly. I don't know, I made a mark here that shouldn't be here, but whatever. We'll live with it. Um, I'm just moving, moving my body around actually to, uh, to add the cross hatching. Ta -da -da. Oh, here we go. It's light, you see, right? It's super light because there's some serious lightness too on the, on the original photo. Okay. There's a dot of light here on her nose. And I don't want to touch that. I want to leave that off. I want to stay away from that. Okay, so starting to look like a face. Uh, do you ever use a variety of pen colors on one portrait? Oh, such a good question, Joan. I'm monochromatic and I really would like to, um, at some point, experiment with adding, let's say a bunch of red in this nose or on the cheek which I have not done yet, um, but I need to do that. I think, uh, I think this would be an amazing addition to cross hatching would be to mix the colors of different uh, ballpoint pens. So to answer the question, Joan, I'm a very monochromatic person. I'm only using one color, but I need to experiment with that. Um, maybe something for the future. Okay. Um, what types of practice would you recommend for showing depth better when you notice a lack of it in a drawing face in particular? Um, I would say the, what, the best way to practice uh, with here, Ted, is by, you know, when I was telling you guys about doodling when, you, when you're on the phone or when you're talking, on the phone is better because when you're talking, people don't think that you're listening to them when you're doodling, when really... I know I do, um, because doodling is really, for me, a way to focus. But um, do this when you have nothing better to do. Do a lot of light strokes. This is the best way to practice your light strokes on a separate sheet of paper like this. And then you can bring in this technique into your drawing when it's time to draw. Like, for example, here on the side of her face, super light. So now my hand has a little bit of, um, of practice. I'm going to bring in these light strokes. Super, super, super light. Look at that. Oh, it's so light. And they're longer. And my pen does not even dare to drool in moments like this. It knows better. I'm just kidding, of course. 
but it really drools less when you draw very lightly than when you press hard on your on your paper your pen will really uh forgive you for um it will be very forgiving when you go light Because that's often the question I get. How do you keep your pen from, from drooling? I don't keep it from drooling. I use this. I wipe it. But I find that when I crosshatch so lightly, it will not drool that much at all. There you go. And then coming back and adding a little bit more information, a little bit more value, just like that. Okay, there's a patch of light here on her forehead, but it's even lighter here than it is here. So I feel somewhat safe adding just a tiny bit of cross hatching here, light. See that? super light and keep in mind the forehead is a uh, you know is curved so you want to make sure that your cross hatching is not super straight that you're going in a little bit of a of a curve like this see what i'm doing here curve 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 just like a mac potato that we did during my lesson cross hatching with friends and sketchy sign up if you haven't just throwing it out there, guys. And now I'm feeling safer, adding even more darkness here on her forehead. Remember, I'm drawing somebody who has a fairly dark complexion. Not super dark complexion, but um, there is a lot of contrast that I can, I can play with, and that's a beautiful thing. Oh. <clears throat> it's no coincidence that when I draw my students, I usually draw my students who are uh, dark complexioned, African American students. I ask them first, I'm like, do you think I could draw your face? They're like, oh my gosh, yes. And <laughs> Okay, let me answer another question. When do you first layer with the slightly curved hatching that follows the contour of the face? How do you then decide which way to angle your next layer? I get lost when I'm trying to follow the shape I see. The hatching layers wind up all going in the same direction. Mm. I know, I know the feeling. And that's where you really have to get into the habit of never settling for one direction and always keep your paper or your hand moving, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to illustrate the answer to your question by doing it right now. I'm doing light in the fairly uh, curved area of her face and constantly using a different angle. You see what I mean? There we go. Okay, I didn't finish my, but you see what I did? What I did is I didn't do one way. I just kept moving it around so that they don't end up going in the same direction, whether it's light or dark, especially when it's light. Because when it's light, you know, you notice them a, a lot more. This is the edge of her um, eyebrow. When you go dark, I mean, frankly, like right now, I'm just filling in an area that really should look super dark. So I'm not really worried too much about the directions, direction they're going in. There, what I want to achieve here is like a, a big patch of darkness. Pressing, putting a lot of pressure on my pen right now. And now nearing the eye. Being a little more careful, but still it's dark. So I'm just, okay, a little lighter now, a little lighter. But still there's dark here on the, uh, on that crease, you know, of the uh, 
eyelid. So adding darkness. It's dark. So again, when it's darker, my little cross hatches have a tendency to be a little shorter. Okay. Okay. Uh, Javier, oh yeah, so yes, there's going to be more on Sketchy and um, I'm always working on some kind of project for, uh, for a book or, you know, who knows, who knows, but there is definitely going to be more going on on Sketchy. Um, classes coming up and uh, all that good stuff. Yes, yes, so just, just stay tuned is what I should say. Okay. Um, oh, Joy, very good question. Do I use cross hatching over paint? Well, since I don't really paint a great deal, um, it's not something that I can answer with a great deal of experience. However, you know, when I draw a car and I add watercolor to make it look like it's a certain color, um, I will sometimes come back with my pen and add a little bit of hatches over the paint. And it works. It really does. And honestly, are there rules against that? I don't know. Do we get our artist card revoked if we do things that we're not supposed to do? I wouldn't care about it. Just try it and see if it works. Okay, adding now a little bit of darkness in that eye. Okay, you see the face is starting to look like a, like a face. It's almost a sculpture. My gosh, she is beautiful. And I'm not saying on my drawing. She is just, oh, such a beautiful face. And guys, may I point out the fact that I did not draw a man with a beard? Are you happy about that? That I'm actually uh, using variety in my subjects? Okay, I'm being facetious, but I do have a proclivity for drawing facial hair. I absolutely love it. I think it's, it looks so cool, and pen in particular. But today, nope. No facial hair, just a very elegant face. Beautiful features. And me trying not to cross hatch to death. <laughs> okay. Uh, is the big pen one with a medium tip or fine tip? Oh, Robert, good question. This is medium. Anything that Bic does that is crystal here, it's medium. Uh, when they make their big pens uh, orange, you know, solid orange, opaque, then you know it's fine. So I I rarely use fine for whatever reason. I've never, even when I was a kid and I used to uh, draw or write with my big pens, I didn't like the fine, uh, the fine tips. Now, it doesn't mean it's the wrong way to go. Don't get me wrong at all, but it's just a personal preference here. And I think that when I know I'm going to do something dark, I'm going to need a little bit of thickness. I think the, uh, the medium ballpoint is, is the way to go. Okay, um, <clears throat> wow, I'm just so happy to see who's here. You have no idea. <laughs> and no, I'm not going to give her a man bun. <laughs> no, though she does have, uh, you know, one of those uh, head, head um, gears, I guess you would call it. Like, a, like what I'm drawing here is the the shadow of what her hair, hair band is. It's like a whole headband here. You know, African women, they wear these like headbands or, that kind of really save them from worrying about their hair for one day, which is really brilliant. I don't know, I don't know why I can't do that. Well, I can't because it wouldn't look good on me. That's the answer. I really wouldn't, but man, they can pull off these really cool headbands. So I'm doing the shadow of it here. So now I'm bringing again, a lot of darkness on the side of her face. And this is not enough. I need to come back to it. 
and adding it so that it looks the way it does on the photo, which is dark, dark. The darkness that I have here is the same darkness that I have here in the darkest areas. That's something you always want to keep track of when you, when you crosshatch is where is the darkest area and how do I convey that? Is this as dark as this? Yes, it is. Then go for it. Fill it in. Same thing with the top here. Okay. Now going light. Juggling between light and dark. All the time. And not really worrying about, oh, do I go in this, that direction? Whatever feels right, really. Okay. Your drawings feel relatively small. Yes, it is easier to start with small board than drawings. Yeah, I. you know what, Joan? I think that... Um, if you try to go big with a thin pen, I think you're going to drive yourself crazy. So this is a nice, a nice scale for the thickness of the pen. I think that if I were to do something, let's say on, uh, you know, 12 by 24, then I would have to rethink the kind of pen that I'm using or rethink the amount of time that I have to do this drawing because I'm usually limited with time. And um, for me to tackle something uh, on a bigger scale with such a small ballpoint, I would have to give myself a lot of time. It's possible, but it's just realistically in my life, you know, with a kid and a full-time job, uh, sometimes you don't have six hours ahead of you to do a very elaborate drawing. So, I tend to stick to a, a, a scale that works for me and that is doable within, let's say, an hour, you know, or 30 minutes for that matter. The thing that I did yesterday to, to post it on Instagram, this guy here, took me about 20 minutes. Not very big. Look at the scale compared to my, to my pen, okay? Um, if I had drawn the whole face, obviously, it would have taken me easily an hour. Um, but I think it's it's a practical thing, Joan, at the end of the day. It really is. Okay, here I've got some darkness and underneath the eye. Things get dark under the eye. They do. But I'm going to go light first. Oh, I'm noticing that there's even more darkness in that eye. It's really interesting. My goodness. Okay, there's a lot of contrast here. There's like a big, uh, big area of just light here that I don't want to touch. The edge of her nose, a little bit of a, of a crease here that I'm going to suggest with a little bit of cross hatching. There we go. Okay. So you see, as a quick recap, go with where the darker areas are. Fill those in. Feel comfortable. Practice on the side uh, piece of paper. Also, wipe your pen on that piece of paper. I also wipe my pen sometimes straight on that piece of paper. See what I did here yesterday when I was drawing him. <laughs> doesn't matter. Let's not be precious here, okay? This is not about making a perfect product. This is about, well, how well am I, or how much am I going to learn from doing this, you know? Take the learner's approach. This is, this is it. It's all about, okay, what am I going to learn from drawing this today? It's not about producing a beautiful drawing, okay? All right. So, um, Oh, Sophie, tu es là, yay. Let's say you doodle a circle to learn curves. How would you cross hatch inside of it? Okay, Clara, that's something that I show very well in my lesson um, with uh, the potato, for instance, but it is something that I've done also on one of my lives. Uh, how to approach a circle like this, right? And filling it in uh, with cross hatching. This is something that you will see uh, very well in my class. It's, it's really a cool little um, um, 
a little practice thing. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, do you ever add catch lights in the eyes to make them look more alive, even when, when they are missing in the photo of subjects? Paul, this is such a good question. I tried that several times and it never looked right. So I tried to stay faithful to what the photo is saying to me. Because if I did add, you know, like those little catch lights that you were talking about, it may not have gone uh, with the mood of the photo. So I tried to quote unquote, respect the mood of the photo and go with that. Um, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Those things really do make eyes look more alive. But I think in the case of this particular photo that I chose, we were dealing with a particularly dark, um, dark area in the eyes. So I'm going to stay with that. I'm just going to go with what the photo tells me. Adding just a little bit of darkness here in the crease of the nose. Here too, tiny bit, because that's what I see. Okay, so obviously, guys, I'm not going to be able to finish the entire face. Um, but if you know me already, uh, you know that finishing is overrated because this is all about practicing. This is not about pro producing a, a beautiful drawing or a finished drawing. Um, what you can do in an hour while talking in, in front of a camera, well, sometimes it's uh, three quarters of a face and that's okay. Uh, we're here to learn, right? And you wanna know who also learns a lot while doing this? Myself, because Having to teach something and having to explain it as a teacher, I can tell you, is the best way to learn something. So you have no idea how much I'm learning from what I do because suddenly I'm in a position of having to explain. So it has to make sense to me too. So here I am trying to, you know, make sense for me so that I can make sense for you. Okay. Um, oh, that's right, Arturo. I want to show you a little bit of a close-up. Okay, guys, this is super close. Are you ready? I am going to go here and go crazy close with my camera, okay, and show you cross-hatching. Now, I'm going to be maybe shaky on the, on the camera, but can you see? I'm going light here, super, super light. a little closer. Also, the speed at which I cross hatch is not really relevant. You can go a little slower or a little faster. Here I have a lot of darkness, so I'm going to add more curves as I go. There we go, curving here a little bit. Okay, this doesn't look right, you know, it's a little um, drooly here. Who cares? I'm going to come back to it later and add more darkness. Arturo, I hope this helped. I'm sorry, I'm covering the camera for just a second. Here we go. I'm back. Okay, did it help? Did you like this? <laughs> I hope you did. Okay, um, the pens that work best, Kelsey, big pens. The one I'm using right now, cheap, reliable, and it has a nice flow. And this is with a medium tip, reliable as anything. I didn't ask my friend who gave me this pen yesterday how much it cost him, but I'm gonna wager a guess here and say that this pen was probably not even two euros. In other words, expensive materials don't make for uh, good art guys. Oh, I didn't even get to the mouth. But you know what? You saw me crosshatch, right? Did you? Did you see me crosshatch today? <laughs> I hope you did. Um, and we are, oh my gosh, I think an hour went by. An hour went by. 
my gosh. Okay. Um, so I'm glad that the close up did something. Maybe we need to do more of that. Next time I do something like this, I'll bring uh, the camera much closer. With the clipboard, it doesn't matter because I can just hold the phone very close and it works. So this is what we've done, okay? It's obviously not finished, but bringing the camera a little closer, I want you to see that we got some serious values going on. You see here? Okay, I'm sorry, it's kind of loud. See here, the dark against the lighter areas. Also, not forgetting to leave some out because otherwise you will never have um, the illusion of light. Okay, there we go. Moving away a little bit. And here it is. Oh, unfortunately, I really went into the details, so I didn't finish the face. But let me tell you, finishing is really not what it's, uh, what it's about. It is really about practicing. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming here today. Um, I don't want to just advertise for big pens, but this is my favorite brand of ballpoint. Um, get yourself some. Get a pack of 12. That way you can lose them left and right. It doesn't matter. Have some in your purse. Have some in your pockets at all time. You never know when 10 minutes are going to be available for you to, to draw. Um, so... Yeah, I'm going to take care of my uh, sniffles. I, I have to drink a tea or something. Um, but there you are. You've got a little bit of cross hatching in today. Please, I'm going to post this on Sketchy. Go on Sketchy. Find that original photo, which you will see when I post mine. Okay, because I'll post it like this. I'm just, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to post what I did today during the live. And I'm inviting you to use the same photo and try it. Try maybe the eyes, maybe just the nose. How about the eyes and the nose? And don't worry much about finishing it. Really, that's it. So um, see you on Sketchy. And if you want to take my class, go ahead. It's a lot of fun. And, uh, and it's a lot of curves. <laughs> okay, everybody have a great Saturday wherever you are. I'm just so excited that so many people showed up today. It was just wonderful to, to share this with you. Um, I'll see you soon. We'll do this again, I'm sure. And um, all right. Have a great day, everybody. You can rewatch this, not live, by the way. So, all right. I say goodbye now. Yes. I'm going to close the... Okay, bye. <laughs>